An exponential equation has the unknown in the exponent. When you see these, there are two attack strategies, and they're based on this question. Is it possible to rewrite it with the same base? So that's a yes or no question. If the answer is yes, then you do that. Then you set the exponents equal to each other and solve. If it is not possible, you will use a log or a natural log. You're going to bring the exponents down and solve. On this side, the base is 2, and it's raised to the exponent x minus 3, and that's what we're trying to solve for, but the base is 2. So if you can, you need to rewrite 16 so that it also has a base of 2. 16 is actually 2 to the fourth power. So rewriting, we have 2 to the x minus 3 equals 2 to the fourth. Since the base is the same, the exponents must be equal to each other. x minus 3 equals 4. Add 3 to both sides, x equals 7, and that's all there is to this problem. It is done. Okay, in this one, you don't see the 2, but both 64 and 32 can be written as bases of 2 with an exponent. 32, this is 2 to the 5th, 64 is 2 to the 6th, so we're going to rewrite those. 64 is 2 to the 6th, and 32 is 2 to the 5th. To simplify this, you multiply the powers using the power rule. If you have an exponent that's raised to a power, we multiplied those exponents. This 2 to the 6 raised to the 3x is going to be 18x. 2 to the 5th raised to the 2x. We have distributive property here with this one. So it would be 2 to the 10 plus 5x. Now that they have the same base, the exponents look different, but we know they must be equal. 18x equals 10 plus 5x solve. Take 5x away from both sides. We get 13x equals 10. Divide both sides by 13. We get 10 over 13, and that is the solution. 3 raised to the power of x equals 21. All right. Can you rewrite 21 so that it has a base of 3? Well, 21 is 3 times 7, but I can't take 3 times 3 times 3 in any way to be able to get 21. So this is the answer, and this one is no. You can't rewrite 21 so that it has a base of 3 raised to an exponent. So the first thing we're going to do is rewrite this using our logs. We're going to take the log of both sides, and then we'll use log properties to bring those exponents down and solve. I like to use natural log because it's two letters. <laughs> 3x equals the natural log of 3 to the x equals the natural log of 21. Now the rule says that if you are taking the natural log of both sides, you're allowed to bring that exponent down. So x natural log of 3 equals the natural log of 21. Then in order, we're trying to solve for x, so we're going to divide both sides by the natural log of 3 x equals the natural log of 21 divided by the natural log of 3. That's an exact answer. If you need to use a calculator, you can do that as well. Approximately equal to 2.771. You have to go with your teacher on this one. Um, when I was teaching, I liked the exact answer more so than the decimal. All right, let's take a look at this one. All right, there's a little bit of work we can do before we decide how we have to do it. I need for the 5 with the exponent to be on its own on this side, so we're going to take 3 away from both sides first. 5 to the x minus 1 equals 37 minus 3, 34. Let's do regular log. Log of 5 to the x minus 1 equals log 34. And this allows us to bring this exponent down. So we get x minus 1 log 5 equals log 34. x minus 1 equals log 34 divided by log 5. The last step where I'm going to add 1 to both sides, log 34 divided by log 5. And I'm adding 1 to both sides. 34. Now I need to use the log button, not the natural log button. Divided by 5 log. I get an answer, add 1 to it, and my decimal approximation is 3.191. x equals 3.191. x is approximately equal to that. Okay, this one doesn't seem to be very complicated, but I'm choosing one that's simple because I want to show you how to check your answer if you are asked to do that. 
log 7 to the x power equals log 12. The x comes down, so it'll be log 12 divided by log 7. So let's come up with a decimal approximation here. 1.277. If you are asked to do a check to make sure your answer is right, so 7 raised to that power, we're wondering if that really does equal 12. 7 raised to the 1.277 equals 12.000, pretty close. So yeah, that's, that's what we are doing when you are solving these equations. There's no way you'd come up with that exponent out of your head. You have to have some technique for doing it, and logarithms are the way that we can. Start by adding 8 to both sides. 20e to the 3x equals 140. Divide both sides by 20. e to the 3x equals 7. Natural log e to the 3x equals the natural log of 7. 3x comes down, 3x natural log of e equals the natural log of 7. Okay, that's why you're using natural log, because you're going to get that natural log of e, which we know equals 1, and that becomes 3x equals the natural log of 7. It simplifies very quickly. You're going to divide both sides by 3. x equals the natural log of 7 divided by 3. This is the exact answer. I'm not going to do the decimal approximation. You know how to do that with your calculator. This is a special little problem. Your exponent has an exponent. That's it. That's like inception level. <laughs> and there's a fraction. So pretty much everything that actually freaks people out about math is all wrapped up right here in this one problem. Well, even if you're not sure, you have a couple of attack strategies. you got to remember that very first question that you're supposed to ask is, is the same base possible? It is. 25 is 5 squared, so there's got to be a way to write 1 over 25 with an exponent base of 5. So I'm going to say, yes, this is possible. So let's redo it. Well, let's think about it first. 1 over 25, well, that's the same thing as 1 over 5 squared, right? And since that's in the denominator and a 1 on the top, you can rewrite this as 5 to the minus 2. 5 to this beautiful exponent of x squared plus 3x equals 5 to the minus 2. And then you're supposed to set the exponents equal to each other and solve. So x squared plus 3x equals negative 2. Now all of a sudden this is no longer a difficult problem. We're back into just doing some algebra. I'm going to add 2 to both sides. x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0. Pretty simple factor problem. x plus 2, x plus 1. Our two solutions are x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 1. I think we need to check those though. Let me make some room for checking. All right, so if x equals negative 2 and I pop that in here, we have 5 negative 2 squared plus 3 times negative 2. And we're wondering if that's going to equal 1 over 25. 5, well negative 2 squared is 4, minus 6, that is 5 to the negative 2. So we know that that equals 1 over 25. So that one works. 5 to the negative 1 squared plus 3 times negative 1. That is 5 to the 1 minus 3. And that gets us back to 5 to the negative 2, and that also equals 1 over 25. So yeah, those were the two solutions, and that would work. All right, now we're taking a look at this one, except this one has got a little bit of a wrinkle in that these two things are being multiplied together. If you have a to the m, and you're multiplying that times a to the n, you end up adding those exponents. So here we have 3 to the x squared plus 3x, and that equals 81, which is 3 to the fourth power. So x squared plus 3x equals 4. Subtract 4 from both sides. We have another quadratic we're going to end up factoring. So our two solutions are x equals negative 4 and x equals a positive 1, and I'm going to leave the check to you. Now for an application, for the word problems that are going to go with this, that would be growth and decay problems. So I'd like you to watch this video next.